Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here representing Analytics Course and Jefflytics.com. And I want to share with you some insights about how do you create retroactive goal dashboards for SEO reports in Google Analytics. Now, this is a really specific question that came in on our private Facebook group for Analytics Course members by Dieter. And he wants to know, hey, I want to know how organic search is performing. But not only that, but I want to know how it performed based on past data. So the website he's working on doesn't have goals in place, doesn't have some of the configuration items that we talk about in analytics course. And as he was going to do some analysis, he's like, oh, wait a second. None of these things that you teach in the course are in place and I need to go figure out how to do these things. And so he had quite the conundrum and I wanna talk in this video about how you can solve this problem for any data you have using some techniques around segmentation and just using some general knowledge of Google Analytics, you can go in there and you can get some retroactive reporting, even if you didn't have things set up properly. And so this video is all about reporting when the data isn't there, how I look at data, how I look at solving problems, the troubleshooting lists that I go through, if you don't have everything you need, is there a way to find things? Now, sometimes we find things right away, there's easy ways to do it. Sometimes we play around and we don't get the answers we're looking for. And you'll see in this video whether or not we can find the answer we're looking for. Now, I try to approach every problem in Google Analytics as if there's going to be a solution. And the reality is that sometimes there is not a solution. And so as we go through this, let's think about it from that perspective. Is Jeff going to solve this problem or not? Who knows? Well, actually, I know. And I know what's going to happen here. But maybe you don't. And so this isn't just about how do you answer Dieter's question. This is really about... How do you solve problems? How do you look at data? How do you deal with adversity in this situation where you know that you want to get at something, but it's not there? How do you be resourceful in the way that we approach data? I'm going to cover all these things in this video. It's not just simply how do we find the answer you're looking for. It's how do we adjust our mindset to know where to look for the answer? And then if the answer isn't easily readily apparent, can we still get what we want? So watch on to see how I approach problems with analytics and also as I answer Dieter's specific question about creating some kind of report for organic search performance when goals are not in place on the website. It's time to talk about retroactive goals in Google Analytics, specifically for measuring your organic search conversions. So I want to talk about retroactive goals in Google Analytics. Specifically, I want to talk about how do you measure organic search conversions and answer a question from one of our analytics course students. But before we get to that, I want to start with an existential question, and that is, what is the purpose of your website? Take a second, pause, pause this video, and think about this question. Think about the answer to this question. What is the purpose of your website? Is it to sell something direct to the consumer? Basically, is it e-commerce? Do you want to generate leads? Do you just want to publish content and not be bothered by anybody? Make a little bit of money on the side from ads? Do you want to help your customers? Do you just want to provide information? It could be any one of these things. It could be all of these things. Generally speaking, people's websites, they exist to do several functions, both commercial functions as well as informational functions. And so answering this question helps you understand what the purpose of your website is. And once you know what the purpose of your website is, you start to make decisions to help you accomplish that purpose. Basically, you help set goals for yourself to say, yes, I need to do this. I want to do more of these things to get more of that purpose, to fulfill the purpose of my website. Now, before you do anything else in analytics, you need to answer this question. What is the purpose of your website? And then you can go ahead and you can set up analytics. Now, when you set up analytics, you'll notice that they say, all you need to do to see your site's traffic is these three simple steps. Now this hasn't changed for a long time. This has been around for years, this screen. It says you sign up for analytics, you put code on your site, and you learn about your audience. There's not a step here that mentions you need to tell them what the purpose of your website is. So don't stop there. Make sure you add in step number four, which is to tell Google the purpose of your website. Because if Google doesn't know what the purpose of your website is, these reports are not going to be super useful for you. Now in the terminology of Google Analytics, what you're doing here is you're actually setting up goals for your website. So when you are telling Google Analytics the purpose of your website, you are setting up goals. And here's how you set up goals in Google Analytics. It's pretty straightforward. 
there's a three-step process. Part one, you choose the type of goal that you want to set up as far as the template. You can either use the names that Google recommends for you, or you can just put in any name you want to. Now in step two, I just put in any name that I want to. So I call this Jeff's Awesome Goal, and I'm doing a destination goal. Now I use this about 90% of the time when I set up a goal in Google Analytics because it's a thank you page, basically. It's some kind of page that you send somebody to. Now if you want a comprehensive explanation of how goals work, then you're gonna need to sign up for my analytics course because we go very in depth and spend hours talking about goals, how they get set up, and how to troubleshoot any problems you have. But for now, I'm just showing you this screen. This is what it looks like. And then on step number three, you put in the URL that basically indicates that you were successful, that somebody was successful as they came into their site. So I just made this one up. I said, I love my YouTube watchers. Yes, it's you. And every time that you get to that page, which doesn't exist right now, but maybe it will by the time we publish this video. And once you get to this page, you've created $10 million in value for me because obviously I love my YouTube subscribers. That's how you set up a goal. Basically you define it around when somebody gets to a success page on your site, you set it up, you can assign some kind of value to it. Now I wouldn't put a $10 million in there for your real account for any of your stuff because it would really totally skew your data. Something again that we teach in analytics course not to do, but this is the gist of how things work. Now do this before you do anything else. And now I say, please, I'm asking you nicely. I'm saying, please, I'm putting it in all caps. Please do this before you do anything else because otherwise you're not gonna get a lot of useful data out of Google Analytics. But then comes the question, what if you don't have goals in place? Now I teach a lot of people how to use Google Analytics. I've been doing this for years, over 10,000 people taught in the world of Google Analytics and not everybody comes to me in a situation where they have perfectly set up goals in place. Maybe they've been using it for a while and then they look at my education programs and they say, oh man, this is really cool. Jeff's giving me some information, but I don't even have goals in place. How can I track this? And so this happens all the time. People, yes, they, they follow the Google recommendation, which says put code on your site and you have insights, but they don't actually go through the process of setting up goals because they don't know they need to because Google doesn't even tell them they need to until they take my course or until they take another program, until they start digging and peeling back the onion on Google Analytics, they don't know that this is something they need to do. And then we get situations like this. This is one that Dieter inherited an account and he says, hey, when there's no goals set up in GA, is it still possible to have a clue how much organic search has most likely converted into sales? And he's saying, I just want a rough estimate. I don't need an exact number, but I wanna know how much of my organic search has converted into sales. Great question. This is one that I get all the time because like I said, people come to me in different phases and don't always have the insight that they need to set up goals until I tell them they need to. So in other words, can you determine the conversion rate without having goals in place? Let's investigate. And we're gonna go into Google Analytics and we're gonna talk about how this works. So here we are in Google Analytics and we are on the demo account for the Google Merchandise Store. Now you can see here there's organic search. They have quite a few organic search visitors coming in. Now, if we scroll all the way over, you can see they've already set it up where they have e-commerce conversions and they know their conversion rate. So they've been proactive and they have set this up. Obviously, if they're gonna make a demo account for us, they need to be proactive. But that doesn't mean we can't determine this on our own and we can't set up retroactive goals as well. So I'm gonna show you how you can set up retroactive goals when you have no goals in place. Now, in order to set up retroactive goals, what we first need to do is we need to go into our behavior report and we need to look at the different pages on our site and we need to determine what is the page that somebody goes to when they've been successful in ordering. So usually I go in here and I do a table filter and I'll say, is there something around the word order? And you see here, there's something called order completed. It says that there's 4,730 who have seen that page and 2,100 unique. I think that's the right place to go. And so order completed.html is gonna be our thank you page. So I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my acquisition report and I'm gonna look at my all traffic. So now I'm back in my acquisition report and yes, it says that there's 2000 transactions. So it's not an exact match to the number of conversions we had on the order complete, but it's close enough. And so I'm gonna use this as our indicator as to how do we know how many conversions we had from organic search if this is not set up, if the conversions tab is not set up at all. And so what we need to do here is we need to go and look at segmentation. Now, by default, we're looking at 100% of our users, but we can add different segments to look at certain populations of users. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a new segment, and then we are gonna choose the page, and we're gonna say contains order completed.html. And we are gonna create this thing, and we're gonna look and see how many people got to that point. I notice that's 2.81. That is exactly matching the e-commerce conversion rate that we saw on our site. So that's pretty great. Basically 2.81% of users 
saw the order completed page. And so that pretty much matches up entirely. So we put in there the thank you page. We knew that's the one. That's the only page you see when you have completed an order. We put it in here. And it, actually, this matches our conversion rate that we saw in e-commerce. So I'm going to save this segment as analytics demo account purchasers. I'm going to save that. And then this is applied to our data. So we have here 2.81% of users, which is the number that we're looking at, who have gone through the process of converting. And if we go down here, we can see the referral. We can say 1,450 came through referrals. We can see 293 from organic search. And we can see that about 14% of the overall converters came from organic search. So we have 293 converters from organic search. That generated 296 transactions. Conversion rate is almost 100% because these are the ones that we, we converted. Obviously, for the question Dieter has, this isn't in place. So we know this is the case. We know how much revenue is in there. So basically, we know this is a pretty accurate depiction as to what's happening on our site. So what I like to do is I'll compare this to our all traffic. And then so what I like to do is I like to look at the converters compared to all users. And then I do a comparison here. And I see now that organic search has 293 conversions out of 31646 users. Now, if I were to divide 293 into 31646, that would give me my conversion rate. Now, this is not a perfect calculation because we are using a backdoor way of determining this, but you're going to be able to divide this into this and get your conversion rate. Now, if we compare that to things here, we can see that actually it does the 296 conversions, 0.78% conversion rate. We have perfectly matched this up. Basically, even though goals were not in place, we can use this segment to give us a perfect match to the number of people who have converted. And this works out pretty well. This is pretty awesome to see because we want to see the number of conversions we have on our website. And we were able to do that by creating a retroactive goal using advanced segments. And that's really how this works. So I expect there's going to be some questions as people go through this video, but that's the gist of how you create a retroactive goal. And so I'm going to go back into my presentation, recap the steps for you, and then I'm going to show you where you can go if you have questions remaining. Okay, so we just showed you how to create a retroactive goal in Google Analytics. Here's how we summarize what we do. First of all, yes, you can create retroactive goals in Google Analytics to track your organic search conversions. I know it's a mouthful, but that's the question. And yes, you can do it. And I just demonstrated exactly how you can do that in the Google Merchandise Store account. And the exact steps you need to take are, one, determine what your conversion page is. In this case, we said order completed.html. Yours will probably be something like thank you or order received, whatever that ends up being. You need to determine that URL. You need to go in and find it and have that exact URL string handy so you can create this segment. Two, create your advanced segment. Pretty straightforward. You look at the sequence. You make sure they have seen the page order completed.html. You put it in there. You save it. You apply it. And bam, you can see if this worked or not. Now, I had the luxury of seeing if this worked pretty easily because I could compare it to the actual results that were showing up from the goals that were proactively configured. In your case, you're going to have to just take a leap of faith and say, yes, I think this is what ended up happening here. This is how it worked. You're going to have to do some manual calculations, but you are going to get your conversion rate in doing that. And then number three, view your organic search report with that segment applied. And it's simple as that. Compare all traffic to the one in your segment, and you can get your conversion rate pretty easily. You can see exactly how many people converted from organic search by doing that. It is that easy in 99% of the cases. Now, there is the 1% where this doesn't work, and that is when you don't have a defined URL for the thank you page. Now, if you have that in place, if you're still struggling, make sure you leave a comment on analyticscourse.net on this post itself so you can take a look at it. We'll do our best to answer it and help you figure out what's going on here. Otherwise, leave a comment on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you if you thought this is useful or if you have some questions about retroactive goals. And while you're at it, join our free Google Analytics mini course at analyticscourse.net. And I look forward to seeing you there learning Google Analytics with me. This is Jeff Sauer signing off for Analytics Course for jeffalytics.com. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you soon.